a bit about um, how the libraries are promoting um, and uh, researching aspects of our local history. Um, we, we obviously have um, you know, five different libraries in very distinct areas with their own unique history. But um, Maribor and Harvey Bay probably are the most active in terms of uh, historical research. About um, three or four, you know, um, one of the main areas that we have a lot of historical research here is family history research. Here in Maribor, obviously, we have two histor her um, family history societies. So they do most of the classes and, um, and the research. But in Harvey Bay, the Harvey Bay Histor um, Family History Society is actually based in our library, so we run the classes there, and that teaches people how to, you know, trace back their history through birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates. But what we sort of found was that um, people were, you know, doing that really well. They were creating their own histories, which then they were giving to their grandchildren to ignore. And so what we wanted to do is try and get those people who were learning um, all these valuable skills and research to create more sort of social history that would then be shared and preserved. And about this time as well, 2013, we still didn't have the local paper, the Chronicle on Trove, which was really a, a really ridiculous situation because it's been in print since the 1860s and it's still our paper. So sort of um, the local historical societies um, really um, advocated for that to the National Library and eventually we got Trove, uh, we got it on Trove, which has really turbocharged uh, the, the local historical um, output of local groups. So now it's much more beyond, it's going on, on much more than just uh, local sort of family history research. Um, one of the main outcomes that we have, um, and Kathy probably talk, spoke a bit about this, is our monthly history talks, which we've been now running for a few years. So this one was in July, and this is about um, to do with the Anzacs and um, how we had the very first um, man ashore although nobody could really say that for one way for certain. But certainly Maribor claims a lot of firsts. So that was a recent history talk. Another one um, was about, obviously people write a lot about the book, about ships that came in. Um, um, this was another one I didn't attend. Uh, Maribor Hospital. So this was by Marilyn Jensen. Obviously we have a very um, old hospital here. Much of it's heritage listed. Uh, and we have a very, we have a fantastic um, hospital museum run mo mostly by former nurses by Marilyn. So she spoke recently about uh, the hospital. Uh, this last one, this month I spoke about Bannerman. Now Bannerman was a poet who published in the Chronicle uh, about 30 times a year between 1914 and 1951. So there's this huge wealth of poetry in the Chronicle which is now available through Trove, which I'm sort of collecting, and eventually there'll be a book with, about, with hundreds of his poems, which will be his collected work. So I gave that talk this month, which is really good because it, it talks about uh, the people and events which otherwise wouldn't have been recorded. So I'll, t I'll, I'll read this poem. So this is from May 1919, and this is about a mayor, uh, Worry, and his trip to Bundaberg to play bowls. And this poem's called His Worship's Bag. His Worship went to Bundaberg to play a game of bowls, upon the green by Burnet's stream, along with kindred souls. His Worship took his bag along, a splendid bag, they say, had served its master long and well for many a year and day. He took his bag to Bundy Town, his bowls and all his gear. He played ye ancient game of bowls, for no one did he fear. The game was finished up at last, his Worship didn't lag, but sought the stand and looked around, but couldn't see his bag. He hunted high, he hunted low, no bag was to be seen. He even sought within the drains that drain the famous green. At long and last the bag was found down by the river bank. Twas clearly seen the thieves or thief or thieves had no respect for rank. There lay his worship's trusty bag, who'd served its owner well. The lock was broken and destroyed, for scrap it wouldn't sell. His worship picked the fragments up, his look was most severe. He said, I'll give five pound note to have the scoundrel here. Next time he goes to Bundy Town to play the game of bowls, upon the green by Burnett's stream, along with kindred souls. He'll take a gun and bulldog too. He'll no neither boast nor brag, but heaven help the would-be thief who'll touch his worship's bag. So we're trying to um, sort of get these sort of untold stories, you know, together um, through local historical research. You know, and of Bannerman, um, who was Cecil Lowther, I think I have a, that's him there. So that's Cecil Lowther, who, um, if he hadn't recorded all his poems for the paper, you know, all those stories like that about the mayor going to Bundaberg and having his bag stolen would have been lost. And um, he was, um, he worked in Walkers for about 60 years as a pattern maker. Uh, so he's a very working class guy. He didn't get paid by the Chronicle. They just gave him a free subscription to provide all um, his stories. Um, so another project that we're working on through the libraries and the council is Maribor Open House. 
This is an annual event which um, has about 35 buildings and about 15 gardens open over the weekend. And that's about, um, it's like Brisbane Open House, Sunshine Coast Open House is starting this year, I think, Bundaberg Open House. It's a day where um, to explore architecture. Uh, and in Maribor, obviously, our architecture is heritage architecture with histories. So we get uh, the, you know, the, the historians that come through the library to write the background for each of the buildings. Uh, so this is, these volunteers are at Badau, Badau House, which is an 1883 mansion on the river. Uh, so that's an annual day. It's coming up September 23rd is the buildings and September 24th is the gardens. And through that day, we try and um, have a whole, the whole stream of history. So we have you know, the wealthy mansions like Badau House will be open but also a union hall for the Wharfies we're going to have open this year, uh, as well as other houses, churches, and pubs. And through that way, and through the publication of the program, we're sort of helping people to understand the history through historic places that they can explore and you know, learn more about. Um, this is a publication we put out, um, I think about a year ago. Um, so the idea behind this publication was that we would, um, the local historians um, would write about a specific place they knew very well, that they were associated with. Um, and then we put out this publication um, about the connection between historic places and people. So for example, and it didn't have to be you know, an ancient one. So for example, the Urengan Pier, which we celebrated at Centenary this year, we had a guy who was involved in saving it in the 1980s. He wrote the story about how the community came together to save the Urengan Pier. Uh, another story was from uh, Lady Lynn, whose school, a one-room school at Dundown, is now at the historic village, you know, preserved. So she wrote about her school days. I wrote about Mar about Maribor City Hall because that's my office and about the connection I have with it. Um, so that's something we're probably going to do again because since then we had some more people come forward with ideas on places that they could write about. Um, another um, idea. I'll pass this one around too. Um, so this is um, another publication we put out. I think this one was about 2014. Now, um, fairly recently, um, there was a pretty good exhibit in um, Canberra called A History of the World in 100 Objects, um, which was, um, it's closed now, but that was based on a book which was put out by, I think, the curator of the British Museum um, about, um, uh, about you know, tracing the history of the world through 100 objects. So we decided to uh, do a similar thing on the Fraser Coast. So we called for public nominations of places. We decided to extend it um, to places and objects just because, just to make it, make it easier, um, rather, so it wouldn't just be objects and museums. Uh, so we called for nominations from people who thought that there was a specific place or an object that helped to, um, tell a, you know, a strand in our history to nominate it for consideration. And then, um, and then we went through those and tried to, obviously we had to be a bit political in choosing ones from different areas on the whole Fraser Coast and different streams in our history. Uh, so that book went pretty well. Um, and I think um, in terms of, it also gathered a lot of uh, sort of stories that hadn't been previously told, like um, you know, about forestry, plantation towers, um, and um, other objects in the smaller museums like the Browina Museum. So that's the cover of it. And so on, those, on that cover, um, the top left-hand corner is a little locomotive, which used to take the men down into one of the mines at Howard, into one of the coal mines. So that was reflective of our, you know, our, our coal heritage and how the Burham coal fields really extended um, the town. Uh, the, top, the, uh, the center at the top is the original Maribor site, which is where Mar Maribor was first settled in 1847. And now it's just a grassy park beside um, where we do a lot of archaeological excavations at, actually. Um, and the, the uh, well, there's no actual in there. There's no buildings anymore. No, oh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, so at Maribor Open House, I think 2013, we had an archaeological excavations which were based on time team. So the, the show. So we uh, got a grant to have these professional archaeologists run it. So we had three sites. One was where that picture was, which went down to Aldridge's Inn and found the rut in the, in the stones. Another one was along the shore uh, where we had a hypothesis that the inn burnt down. So they went down into the soil and found a layer of ash. And then we, had, we knew where the dump was, so where the dump was from the 1840s. So that's where we had the public dig, because we knew they could dig up lots of stuff. 
Um, so we actually, um, over 100 people participated in it in like one hour shifts over the weekend, and they dug up all kinds of artifacts. So it was a really successful day, and it actually really increased our knowledge of the site. Um, so that's, yeah, and so that, um, that's the original Mariba site. On the far right-hand corner, that's, um, at, that's one of the older sites. I think that might be number three or number two. That's at Burral, and that's um, sort of as the tide's either coming in and out. You can just make out that there's a big um, semicircle. So the Butchler people, the indigenous people of the Fraser Coast built that. Probably from the middens, we can date it to about 3,000 years ago um, to capture um, seafood as the, the tide went out behind the rocks. Uh, the, top, the, the next one there is the Dundowan Recreational Hall, uh, which we did as sort of that, the, the development of that area. Uh, this really fine building is a grammar school, because we thought it was really significant that Maribor once had a girls' grammar school, because you would never have a girls' grammar school in Maribor now. Uh, the center is City Hall. This is Lamington Bridge, which was designed, uh, the first concrete bridge uh, basically in the world of its style, and it was designed like that to meet the, what they now recognize as the flood conditions. Um, this is a, a de-husker for bopple nuts, or macadamia nuts, which is of course what bopple is famous for. Uh, this is the Pyalba Memorial Hall, uh, which is significant in terms of returning soldiers, uh, the Orangan Pier, and then this is, uh, we wanted to have something about the hospital, so that says wanted student nurses. Um, so it's not very clear, but it, it, it says something very sexist. Um, I don't know, yeah, uh, but, but anyway, it, it's, it, was, it was from the, um, service and over apply, yeah, Senate education. Yeah, I can't quite read it, yeah. But um, so that was about um, the development of the hospital and how we used to have nurses' quarters with all the student nurses living there. Um, another thing that we're working on at the moment is um, this year is the 150th anniversary of the arrival of South Sea Islanders in Maribor, in the Fraser Coast, on board the Mary Smith. Um, so a few years ago, I think um, 2013 was the 150th anniversary or, you know, for Queensland when they first went to Logan. So this is sort of a, an aspect of our history that's, not, that's hardly ever spoken about, and yet it was so central to that early development of the sugar cane um, here um, and further afield like Bundaberg. We don't have a lot of structures like in Bundaberg. They've got walls that were built in the fields, um, whereas um, we've, but we've still got the community here. So the community's been meeting at the library to plan this uh, day, um, which will be in November. Um, close to the arrival, because November 9th is the 150th anniversary of the arrival of um, their ancestors here. So through that, we're hoping to put out a publication uh, which documents that, and then the day will both be a somber one with the tree planting and a march, as well as you know, a family fun day to celebrate the fact that, you know, that the, the ongoing role that they've played um, in Queensland and Australia. But it's through projects like this that we're trying to develop a, a history of you know, Maribor and the Fraser Coast which now goes back to, like I said, 1847 with the original Maribor site. We're trying to capture all the different strands. Um, if you look at some of the previous history books, they really just focus on maybe four or five famous families. Uh, but we're trying to use Trove and uh, people's family history and projects like this, um, South Sea Islanders, to get behind, you know, not, so it's not just about the Aldridges, not just about the mayors or the MPs, but, but a bit about the people who swept their chimneys or the people you know, who worked for them. Um, and the library's playing a very, a very central role in that. So, did anyone have any questions about any of that? No? No? Yeah? You're giving me ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh good. Yeah, no, we have, we have a really good, we have very active historical sort of air, um, groups. So we have a Harvey Bay Historical Society, we have um, a Howard one, which is about coal mining, Browina, which is a really good museum, um, in Maribor, we got, we got a railway museum, a hospital museum, a military museum. The council's got two museums. We've got a few um, historical societies that don't talk to each other, like the Maribor Historical Society and the School of Arts Building's a really good museum. And then in the Heritage Center, which is an old um, Bank of New South Wales from the 1870s, is the two family history societies. Uh, nearby there, we've, got, we've recently purchased the building where the author of Mary Poppins was born, P.L. Travers. So that'll be both a museum about her as well as a center for childhood literacy and you know, learning about storytelling. Um, and then um, elsewhere, we've got a really good museum at Bopple, um, 
which talks about that history, because that's really amazing history at Barpool, because you know, they once upon a time had football, field, football teams, bands, cricket teams, and now you know, they you know, barely have 100 people. So you know, that's a very, another really unique aspect of our history. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted me to talk about, Kathy? Yeah. 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 But yeah, no, I, I really encourage you to come back for Maribor Open House. That's on. Who asked you that? Yeah. Um, it's a mix. Um, so we, everybody loves the houses, but the houses are the hardest to get. Like I had to letterbox maybe six or seven hundred houses. I just walked down the because I, I do it for politics all the time. So I just walk up and down the streets with a letter from me saying, "You've got a great house. Would you like to have it in Maribor Open House?" And on any house I like. And from that, I got one new one this year. So it's, we only have three houses this year. The easiest ones are churches because they provide their own volunteers. Yeah. Um, as well as pubs. Pubs are really good, especially if they go into the private areas and get a good history. Um, so of the 25 buildings, you know, it's a real mix of, you know, churches, you know, there's an old bomb shelter, um, the Union Hall, a few of the museums. Um, and then every year we tried to add stuff, but now it's in the sixth year, so it's sort of reached its level. So one year we had an archaeological excavation at the original Maribor site, which I'd like for us to do again. Um, I think two years ago, or maybe last year, we started having an open gardens day on a Sunday. Originally, because we thought that if people put their garden in one year, the next year they'll be confident enough to have their house in, but it hasn't worked that way. Um, nobody's gone from having their garden in to having their house. But the open gardens day has been really successful. Um, we were going to cancel it this year until we started to get a bit of rain a few, a few months ago. So it, but it makes it a full weekend so people can come up for both, both sides of it. But every year we have about 25 buildings, which has reached its level. For a few years, we had a renovation and restoration workshops and displays, so people could come along and learn what they could do with their, um, their own house. But we, we, so we had that for a year. We might bring it back, because we just try and bring different things in and out. We have walking tours. One of the really popular things is we have a St. Paul's bell tower, which was built in the 1880s. People learned to ring the bells from the, the tower captain, Ruth. Yeah, yeah, people loved it. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, we went and did it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it was just really fun. Mm, yeah, and she's yeah, good. Tiny, tiny yeah. little ladder. Yeah. It's actually very simple. I'm not very musical, but... Yeah, yeah, because they teach... There's two different ways you can do it. There's, there's not peeling. Peeling is the really hard bit where, where this is chiming, where you're still pulling it. It looks... It, it is basically... You're, you're playing the music. It's really good. Yeah. There's, you know, eight people and you're number one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, or eight, and they're just like, okay, one, three, five, eight, one, three, yeah. two, three. Yeah, Ruth is like the conductor, and yeah, you're just. And there were some very, very handsome young men that got yeah. my daughter at the end as well. Oh, yeah. There's a family. That would be Lisa's sons. They're family she of young boys. Yeah, they, they live at Bado House now, the big mansion. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> which, and so Bado House was owned by the Aldridges, uh, which was Edgar Aldridge, and he married Maria Aldridge, and she came to Australia to Van Diemen's Land as a convict. So it's sort of, and then that bell tower was built in her memory after she died. So it's actually a very good Australian story that in Maribor, the nicest mansion, which is a Georgian mansion built in, I guess, Victorian times because of the lag. Um, so the mansion built for Maria, for Maria Aldridge and the most establishment thing you could think of in Maribor at the time, which would have been the Church of England bell tower being named in your honor, was all built for a convict. So somebody that you know, left England um, you know, in the worst possible circumstances you know, died here basically in the aristocracy. So it's a very um, Australian story that you know, we're sort of telling through those buildings, both Bado House and, um, and the Bell Tower. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. Great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and, the, and the book launch is um, next month, later in the month. So Hawks is, I, get, I became interested in Hawks. Um, <coughs> so I do, I do, my period is really the interwar period. So Bannerman um, and the politics of the interwar, like Billy Domain was the mayor. Uh, so Hawks built most of the buildings um, in Maribor between about 1918 and 1940. Um, so some of the nice buildings like the St. Mary's Church development, like the, the alterations, St. Paul's Memorial Hall, Carlton Hotel, which you can see outside this window. Uh, and then elsewhere in Queensland, like the Pomona Hotel, he designed that. A few of the hotels in Gympie. Um, so I did that biography just because he was very unknown and um, very unknown and obscure, but he really was responsible more than anyone else for the look and feel of um, Maribor and Bundaberg and King. Um, 
have to check the book again. The, I think there might have been some of the ones that burnt down. You know, coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the Pomona Hotel. Yeah, after it burnt down. So the one that's still standing, um, a really nice one. It was designed by him in. Yeah, 1913, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so else, else, some of the other ones that he designed, like if you've been to um, Gumeri, the Grand Hotel, it's basically the same design as the Carlton Hotel here. Um, at Gainda, the Grand, Grand Hotel, which has a really nice um, sort of roof. Here in Maribyrnong, the Ariad, uh, the Lamington Hotel, which um, isn't that nice really. Um, King Roy, the Carolee Hotel. Uh, Mer in Harvey Bay, the Scarborough Hotel. Uh, which is now demolished. Um, yeah, quite a few hotels and, and churches, um, like at, at Nanango, the Catholic Church, which is a very nice building. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks very much. Thank yeah. Thanks. Thank